uh, the red plug. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Peter Ferreira from Graham Beck. And uh, I'm really here to talk about uh, a sparkling cup classic conversation rather than just taking you through one of our wines, which we will anyway do. So, um, yeah, during this troubled times and sort of uh, unprecedented uh, happenings, uh, this is day eight of uh, the national lockdown. And uh, we really feel uh, that we have something to share. And I hope that you uh, enjoy uh, my presentation. Today's conversation is all about the influence of stemware and the effect it will have on your favorite Cap Classic. This is obviously something that you can do at home. And uh, I will urge you to uh, do this at a stage um, to see for yourself. So uh, what I have done is I have taken our uh, standard Grainbeck uh, Brut, the non-vintage. It's a wine that has spent uh, 16 months on the lease. It was recently discoursed uh, in January. So um, uh, it is nice to use a fresh one uh, because in freshness uh, or a wine that is uh, not so long on the cork, you have much more primary fruit flavors. So um, I've decided to take six stemwares. This in a way has also been something we've been working at our tasting room in Robertson to find a solution for uh, the taste experience. Every wine and every sort of tier that we do have in our bubbly portfolio, our cup classic portfolio, uh, do validate to have their own taste taste class. So uh, just to put it out there, if you do visit, and those of you have been um, uh, to the tasting room, we'll see that we do use different stemways for our various uh, flights of uh, cup classic. Uh, this is not an illusion, as you see right in front of you. Um, I've taken one bottle of wine and uh, give, given each glass equal parts. Um, the saying goes that uh, a glass of bubbles or a bottle of bubbles will give you six pores. So yeah, in front of us, we have six pores. First of all, I want to just show you about the illusion. Um, you would think that I have sort changed some of the glasses, but in actual fact, they have equal amount. This uh, volume in here is just over 110 millimeters of, uh, of wine. And I have chosen to go to the old fashioned coupe and uh, then use the flute glass. Then we have the new uh, overture glass from Riedel that is uh, the, um, the, the, the non-vintage glass that we use back uh, at the winery. Uh, then we have the very very true glass, which is slightly bigger. You'll see, you'll notice the bigger the glass becomes, the bigger, the wider the bowl becomes. And then we have a very fancy one. If I bring this one up very closely, you can see this is what they call a high performance glass. Uh, there's little waves inside this glass. It's also from Riedel. Uh, it's known as the performance range. Uh, and those little lips all on the inside actually helps to expand your experience or flavor experience in the glass. And then last but not least, we have uh, the Lehman glass um, designed by Philippe James. Uh, he is a well-known uh, sommelier out of Champagne, and uh, he has worked. He's, he has worked uh, on this glass uh, for ob obviously things. So why why do we want to uh, give you this experience? First of all, if one goes to the coupe, you can notice 
it's very difficult to move it around because it's fairly filled to the brim. Um, and then if you able to put the, it's really like there's nothing to smell because somehow the flavors just when they reach the top, they simply just sort of run over. A similar experience when they've decided to move from the coop to the flute, uh, you have similar airspace at the top. So you have very little uh, opportunity to get your nose right in there. And if you sort of put your nose there, somehow it doesn't do. However, in a flute, if I can bring this slightly closer, you can see the traveling of the bubbles. It's actually really, really nice. I'll just give you a little bit more of a of a look. I hope you can see that. Uh, maybe a darker background would be fantastic. Um, but it's all about the traveling distance. Now there is a guy called, uh, he's a professor at the Rance University in Champaign, um, Gerard Belair uh, and uh, Leger and um, he has done some really fascinating studies with high photography speed cameras, which analyzed the flow of the bubbles. Now you can see the nucleation of the, these bubbles start at the very bottom and they travel up. Now, those of you who've ever been able to scuba dive, uh, you will remind yourself that if you're really deep down in the water and you do release a little air bubble, by the time it gets to the top, it has grown or expanded to at least three times its size. So uh, what they have found uh, under high-speed photography is that the bubble that's released over there at the top is definitely slightly wider. So uh, obviously it's part of the mesmerizing. I love uh, following the bubble in the flute uh, because you have a long time look at it and uh, it, it's really quite nice but again we are take, talking about the flavor experiences that we want to share with uh, the consumer and friends out there again just to re recap really a coupe beautiful very difficult to handle because of the very wide surface and you would also note if we had a camera from up top that there's only action in the middle of the glass and nothing is on happening on the outside because the bubbles have dissipated. Um, the flute, much more of a, a showpiece for the bubble transfer from the nucleation point to the top. And again, very little opportunity to get your nose into there. But if you go to the expanded flute, uh, the overture from Riedel, immediately you have Four, four or five times maybe the, the, the distance. So uh, if you now pick it up and you can smell it, immediately you can smell a little bit of fruit flavors. Uh, the Grainbeck Brut is a blend of uh, Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. And we, we always try with, uh, the, with, the, with the Chardonnay Pinot Noir, the white blend, um, that the Chardonnay should be the entrance. So in actual fact, we want to show you a little bit of Chardonnay. So if you go back to this glass, you can really see a little bit of light lime uh, flavors and uh, so much more aromatics. We continue the journey. Uh, we get to the Veritas glass, also from uh, Riedel. Um, again, uh, much more of a tulip shape in design, so the wine is expanded from the bottom and uh, you have all the concentration. You can, you can imagine as the aromas build in the glass, it is even more concentrated towards the top. So uh, um, one would expect, oh my, you know, you can immediately now even see just beyond the primary fruit, you can even see sort of uh, integration of the yeast flavors showing. We go on and uh, we now get to the performance glass. Very similar to the previous uh, glass. Um, and I guess uh, these little expansions in the glass itself, 
I hope you can see that. You, you can see that quite clearly. Uh, we must probably will be more of an impression on the palate. So we will wait till we taste all these wines uh, one go. And then the lemon glass. Um, it is to me sort of a real sort of hot air balloon shape type of uh, design. Uh, beautiful. Um, I guess, you know, if we had to f ask f six people, everybody will have a different choice or, uh, you know, uh, something that they like in their own glassware. And uh, I'll come back to that in, in a short while. So again, uh, expansion, which is the important part, uh, according to the research that is done, you need to expand the bubble. So it has to move out a little bit into a wider area and then you need to concentrate it. And you can see again in this balloon shape, uh, it is really interesting. Uh, I've been very fortunate that uh, I've been at uh, a few uh, Riedel glass tastings uh, in the past. And George Riedel taught me two most probably important things. First of all, make sure that the wine or the glass doesn't have a thick rim on the top. This flute has got a little bit of a uh, rim and uh, the reason for not having a rim, the thinner the glass is, the earlier the wine will run onto the palate. And depending on the design, as you can see, maybe from a tulip shape to the sort of balloon shape, if I can sort of use that analogy, uh, it is how the wine will travel to the palate. And if you have a lip at the bottom of the glass and you had to use again the speed of photography to show it, the wine will jump off the lip and will hit only your mid palate. And what happens, your early receptors of sweet, sour and bitter, which sits more towards the front of the palate, is missed. So if you're paying uh, 200 Rand for a good glass of bubbles or a bottle of bubbles in that sense, uh, you're only getting half of your money because uh, your sensations, your early sensations is missed. So uh, keep that in mind that uh, it must be a very thin, thin uh, finish on there. And then the other one is um, just how the wine will enter. Now, with this balloon shape, you are sort of slightly forced to go backwards, but uh, I'm running ahead of uh, the thing. So again, let me take you through uh, the taste sensation now. We've talked about the aromatics, and I think you have a clear idea of, uh, um, of what you can expect. Again, uh, you know, it, it is rather unstable. You can see that it's really slipping around, but to me, there's still a fun element to a coupe, but the wine is pretty sort of flat now, if I can say. The initial entrance, remember, as I mentioned earlier, there's only action on the inside, the outside perimeter, it's sort of known as a dead zone somehow the wine feels a bit flat and uh, I was expecting because it's a non-vintage to be fresh, lively, zesty, you know, and somehow you have to like go back to it. There's nothing wrong with that, but uh, you know, you don't get that feeling of wow, freshness. On the flute, A similar sensation, remember the bubbles is traveling a much longer distance, so it obviously is going and then it pops out with very little room at the top. It has a very similar feeling for me uh, on, on this. And um, although there is a little bit more uh, primary fruit, um, remember it's all not about the initial sensation, it's how it travels on the palate and how it sort of ends in the back palate as it, it's going down. And this wine definitely shows much more length than the coupe shape. Uh, it's not more bright or fresh, but it's definitely longer on the palate. If we go to the Overture glass, 
Oh, beautiful, fresh, vibrant. Starting to really see much more than the wine have, you know, has got to show. And um, what I uh, really like of this is the initial intention, the bright intention as it enters the palate. And that brightness follows right through. Um, so it's a beautiful glass, great example of how there is synergy between the wine that we want to show and the stemware that we, we use. And uh, it's really horses for courses because uh, maybe on uh, a next one and you've then had time to do this test at home, um, we will most probably look at a vintage or even our prestige cuvee and go through the same 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 sensation uh, on the veritas you notice more or less the same sort of what well, they're all the same volume but sort of uh, in a volume metric way uh, very similar to the overture but much more aromatics that can uh, go be in the glass CO2, the bubbles is effervescent, so you expect, you expect the glass to be filled with aromatics. And this is really screaming fruit flavors. You can see the entrance of the Chardonnay and uh, even a little bit of red berry fruits, light strawberry flavors uh, on the palate. Fantastic. Uh, a really beautiful expression. Um, the wine stays for a long, long time on the, on the palate and um, yeah, it's uh, really beautiful. We go to the performance glass um, from, from Riedel. Again, very similar to the Veritas glass uh, on, on the nose. But my goodness. You wouldn't think those little indentations on the inside makes that difference, but wow, it's a complete different wine, nearly. Uh, you can nearly now see, feel the sunshine fruit flavors coming through. There's like an extra dimension of flavors that hasn't been noticeable up to now. And again, this is only on the palate. Uh, it's just, wow, it's juicy. It's vibrant, it's delicious. So, uh, <clears throat> I guess one when, when you do this at home, uh, also you don't really need a spittoon, but you just need a little bit of extra time to really enjoy these the, these wines. And if we get to the last one, uh, the Lehman glass, um, again. Uh, Beautiful aromatics. It's like it sits in the glass. It's like it's closing. It doesn't want to sort of really release it. So showing still much more bubble or fruit flavors uh, in there. The bubbles have all settled down beautifully. There's a beautiful intensity and persistentness in the, in the glass. Um, in my next conversation, I, we might have to touch on a few etiquettes when it comes to uh, serving your best Cap Classique. Um, yeah, there's many, many things we want to talk about because one thing it, that goes along with stemware is uh, either, you know, first of all, the preparation of the stemware, how you polish the glasses, but the other thing is temperature. Temperature is vital for a wine to be showcased in a proper way. So back to the Lehman. You would notice that I actually have to tilt my head a little bit more as I drink this. Uh, it's not that you want a little bit more, it's just how the wine will run from the glass. It's a little bit like a feather on the tongue. There's just so much happening there. The complexity uh, on the palate is beautiful, bright flavors. Um, also, very similar to these two, because yeah, we have 
the glass giving an extra dimension, like flaring the wine open. But yeah, it's a little bit more what it is. And uh, absolutely delicious. I guess, you know, one can go back from, from let's call it the, the proper glass, backwards, and you would find the influence becoming less and less and less. But that is something that you can definitely try at home. And uh, I've come to realize when we speak about our glass act, or, uh, you know, the story and the influence of stemware, I do believe that all of you at home, uh, watching at the moment, uh, do have a fave glass. And I really encourage anyone out there that you, that you, you know, and I can see your heads going, yes, we have a favorite glass, is why not use that glass for all the wines you like to drink? Immediately, it puts you on the right foot forward and it gives you a good feeling. Wow, today I'm going to use my special wine glass. So immediately the atmosphere and the surroundings is just so much brighter. And whatever you are serving in that glass, it is that. So don't go and break your flutes right now. That's not what I'm saying. But I do encourage you that you should try this at home and look at the, the impact of how a stemware or a glass then has the influence on uh, the sensation of the wine. Sometimes a glass would most probably show you something on the palate, will give you aromatics, will give you a complete sensation. But it's not like making a comb combination, it's just deciding on the right stemware for uh, the wine that you're going to use. And uh, I think that is uh, really what it's all about. Um, yeah, I, um, I'm not sure, you know, as this is the first time that I'm doing a, a live uh, um, uh, talk like this, is that I've most probably missed, I see a few thumbs and a few hearts going up, but it's very difficult to sort of follow it on the screen. Uh, but if you do have any questions, um, you know, uh, you know, I think you can definitely, uh, you know, pop us a, a little uh, note uh, on this platform and we will definitely get back to you. And, uh, you know, um, when in doubt, uh, you know, bring out your favorite uh, Graham Beck uh, during this time of uh, national shutdown and uh, just enjoy, enjoy being sort of locked down. Uh, it's something that we have to do and we are playing our part and, uh, you know, I wish you the best at home and, uh, yeah, and above all uh, enjoy your loved ones uh, wherever you are and who, with whoever you are and uh, yeah we just you know we celebrate the moments and we celebrate what matters so uh, i'll be following up uh, on some of the questions and uh, yeah um, i see the high performance glass uh, is getting some traction there um, this is available through Riedel, and I'm no salesman for Riedel out there, but uh, Riedel, Riedel is on the forefront. Uh, they are doing some amazing work. They virtually have a, a, a glass for every, every variety in the world, basically. And uh, as I mentioned, I've been, uh, been in the conversation and been in tastings with George Riedel. And uh, yeah, it's it's fascinating how it can influence uh, the bubble. Uh, the one one last thing I wanted to show in modern stemware. I'm not sure if this is going to really show, but um, if you yeah there, if hopefully you can see that. I'll just get a little bit closer. 
See right on the inside of the bottle, a bottom of the glass, there is like a laser spot. There's like five little dots in there. I hope you can see that. Um, this is part of, uh, it's not a trick really, but uh, the interesting thing about stemware, and as I said, there should be another conversation on the etiquette and the preparation of glasses, which I would love to do with you. Um, but that little um, laser spots in, in the glass um, definitely helps with the nucleation. The interesting thing is you, if you look at a bubble, it looks so explosive, but it actually needs a little rough tension on the inside surface of the glass to, a, to be able to give a nucleation point. A nucleation point is the point of departure where the bubble starts and then travels up. Um, and by having the laser uh, spots inside the glass, uh, it concentrates obviously the action of the bubbles in the center of the glass. Uh, but it is uh, the modern way of doing that. And um, not to let the cat out of the bag, but uh, yeah, you have to, if you're using detergent, uh, please make sure that you do, after washing the glasses, uh, is to actually steam them uh, to make sure that there's no residual uh, uh, of the soap that you used or detergent liquid that you used to clean the glass. Otherwise, you will have no bubbles. I will have to sit in front of you and show you. This wine usually has bubbles, but uh, yeah, for this for this thing, we obviously have taken care. So do prepare your glasses. It will give the extra stimulation and obviously it will give the wine an extra life um, over time. Um, if you are mesmerized by looking at the bubbles, they will slowly dissipate over time because it's warming. Uh, we're doing this tasting outside, so the temperature is warming up. And um, at the same time, uh, the life of a bubble is about, about 25 minutes. Uh, that is sort of the latest that uh, we've got. Uh, there's a lot of uh, um, talk of how many bar bubbles is in a bottle. Uh, we normally we normally say it's about 40 mi 49 million uh, bubbles. So if you had to dilute uh, or work it out into a glass where you have uh, six pores, uh, you know you are having uh, you know at least uh, seven to eight. Where's my arithmetic now? Yeah, n close to 9 million bubbles in a glass before it's uh, a still wine. So uh, catch, catch your favorite wine before the bubbles run out. Uh, otherwise, I'm not Bubbles Ferreira. So uh, I, uh, I hope uh, that you've been entertained a little bit uh, during lockdown. And uh, I'm gladly going to look at... Um, at your your notes that you've you've given and uh, who knows uh, the next one will be very soon where watch uh, watch our feeds and uh, we will uh, give you an idea um, and I will introduce another bubbles uh, from Grainbeck and I urge you all to be safe to be patient uh, this is seriously important for all of us um, and uh, enjoy lockdown and uh, yeah why not uh, celebrate uh, you know I was waiting for the Boeing to go over I was waiting for the Boeing to go over but even they are locked down so uh, yeah it is 11 o'clock all over the world at the moment and uh, I urge you back home to celebrate what matters thank you for listening and tune in shortly. Thank you very much.